Well, hey guys, the internet is all abuzz with Ozempic face, basically a phenomenon in which people who are taking Ozempic lose a lot of weight relatively quickly and their face appears suddenly much thinner with more prominent wrinkles and sagging, making them look, well, older. In this video, I'm gonna explain what's going on here and how this works. As per usual, the internet is making a mountain out of a molehill and they're getting things all wrong. There's nothing about the drug Ozempic that is changing the way people look or making them appear older. This is something that can be seen anytime somebody loses a significant amount of weight. It has nothing to do with the drug itself per se. I'm pointing this out because there are a lot of harmful and false narratives being perpetuated online about this drug causing these types of changes, when in reality, this is a change that can be seen with any type of significant weight loss. The same type of change can also be seen in people who have had bariatric surgery for weight loss. So it's not specific to the medication. What the heck is Ozempic anyway? There's a good chance you've heard about Ozempic at this point. It's been super buzzed all over the internet. Ozempic is a weekly injection that helps improve insulin sensitivity in people who have type 2 diabetes. But it also suppresses appetite, and the downstream consequences of that are going to be weight loss. Ozempic is the brand name, but the medication itself is called semaglutide. Semaglutide acts like a hormone which is naturally present in everyone's body called GLP-1. This hormone makes its way to your brain and it tells you that you are full so you stop eating. So people taking semaglutide will feel full eating less food ultimately they lose weight. The FDA approved Ozempic in 2017 for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Ozempic is not the only medication in this class. Four years later they gave the green light for approval of a higher dose version meant specifically for people with obesity. For example, Wagovi is FDA approved for people who have a BMI of 27 or above plus one or more weight related ailments or for people who have a BMI of 30 or above. However, these medications started getting a lot of hype and a lot of attention around last year in the spring when Kim Kardashian lost a ton of weight in order to fit in Marilyn Monroe's dress. You guys remember that whole debacle for the Met Gala. It was rumored that she was on Ozempic. That's a rumor, that's a legend, I, I have no idea. Then later on, Elon Musk tweeted out that he has taken Ozempic as well as a related compound, Wagovi. Variety Magazine dubbed Ozempic as the worst kept weight loss secret in Hollywood because a lot of people taking this medication who don't have pre-diabetes or diabetes, they just want wanting to do, drop a few pounds. And the drug's not cheap, anywhere from $1,300 to $1,500 a month. So many people these days really, really, really struggle with obesity. Unfortunately, society views it as a problem with willpower and a moral failing, but there's a lot more that goes into obesity. And many people who have obesity, they do struggle to lose weight despite diet and lifestyle modifications. These drugs are not the quick fix. They still need to put in the work to change their diet and to exercise. Unfortunately, society still views obesity as like a moral failing, when in reality, there are genetic factors that play a role. There are actually physiologic differences between people that make it so that it's much harder for some people to lose weight than others who have obesity. Unfortunately, with it being so popularized across social media and getting all of this media attention and hype, there's so much discourse, hashtag Ozembic, that I think it has led people by and large to view this as a quick weight loss fix. And that's not what it is. These medications are a serious commitment. Ozembic can help people lose about 15% of their body weight. But again, they still have to put in the work of eating healthy and moving their body and making lifestyle adjustments. I already pointed out, it is very expensive. You can't just hop on this medication, expect to lose weight in three months, get off the medication and keep it off. Once you stop the medication and the drug leaves your system, your appetite is going to return. Studies suggest that people will regain two thirds of the weight that they lost within one year of stopping the medication. So that's why this isn't a quick fix. On the one hand, you have people for which this medication is medically necessary and it really, really helps a lot of patients who have obesity and or type two diabetes. On the other hand, you have people, because of popularization on social media, celebrities and what have you, who are led to believe that this is just gonna be a quick weight loss fix or to get their body summer ready to shed a few extra pounds. And I got news for you, that is not what this medication is. What about Ozembic face then? Again, as I said at the beginning of the video, this is a myth. The drug does not change your face. The weight loss changes your face. When it comes to weight loss, you can't spot reduce fat. This is a myth that people need to stop perpetuating. There is 
no such thing as spot reduction of fat. But as that fat comes off, you're also going to lose fat in other areas where you may not necessarily want to, like your face. I have a video all about how your face changes with age, and as you'll recall from that video, one major shift that happens as we get into our wiser years is that we get shrinkage of the fat pads in our face and redistribution of those. And therefore, when somebody loses a lot of weight, especially when they lose a lot of weight very quickly, those fat pads in the face, they are going to be affected and you can appreciate then some sagging, more prominent jowls in some cases, deeper wrinkles, and just an overall sunken appearance. But that can happen with weight loss surgery. Any type of weight loss can cause that though. It's not specific to the drug Ozempic. How do you prevent this from happening? Like I said, you can't spot reduce fat. You can't lose weight and expect it not to go down in your face. So after a significant weight loss, if there is a lot of notable volume loss in the face, that can be replaced with cosmetic filler or autologous fat transplant. It involves taking fat and putting it back into your face, either borrowing it from your hips or your abdomen. Another spin on ozembic face is ozembic body. Basically, similar to ozembic face, which again, to be clear, it should just be called weight loss face, weight loss body, when you lose a lot of weight, you are left with skin laxity, loose skin, especially in the abdominal region, maybe around the arms. And for a lot of people, this really bothers them. In some cases, the loose skin can actually cause problems because you have a lot of loose skin that develops friction. And within the folds of loose skin, you get sweat trapping, moisture. The skin can break down as a result of trapping of moisture and friction and irritants in the skin folds of the loose skin. And that can cause a hospitable environment for colonization with like yeast. You can get recurrent skin infections. It can actually be really painful. Whether it be that you're bothered by the appearance of loose skin cosmetically or you're developing complications, the remedy for that is going to be uh, surgery to remove the loose skin, loose skin surgery. That's something that a plastic surgeon would do. It's not something that you just do on a whim. Lots of counseling goes into that. It is a very involved procedure. I mentioned that with age, we get shrinkage of fat pads in the face and redistribution of those, and that contributes to the appearance of facial aging. But you also have some changes that happen in the breasts. In women, uh, when you're younger, the breasts have much more glandular tissue, but as you age, that is replaced more so with fat. So for women who have profound weight loss, their breasts can shrink and droop and they may be bothered by that cosmetically, in which case they may seek out a breast augmentation or lift. But you can't just lose a lot of weight and not expect it to impact your breasts. Another thing to think about is that any prior fat transfer procedure you may have had is going to likewise shrink. Specifically, if you had a, a breast augmentation with fat or if you had a Brazilian butt lift, butt augmentation. In those cases, the surgeon had borrowed fat from like your your abdomen or your hips and put it in your breasts or in your rear end. Well, guess what? When you lose a lot of weight, that's going to be affected. The fat that was borrowed from your stomach or your hips, it retains the memory of those locations so that it's called donor site memory. It remembers how it behaved in its prior location. And therefore in the breasts and in the buttock, you will get shrinkage of that transplanted fat. And so you may need to go back and have revisions of these procedures that you had in the past. So to be clear, the changes that happen to your face and to your body, they're not side effects of the medication. They are consequences of losing a lot of weight. This will happen regardless of what weight loss approach you take, especially if it is rapid weight loss. In terms of actual side effects to these medications, the most common are gastrointestinal upset, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. To counteract these side effects of nausea, vomiting, Patients are started at a low dose and the dose is only increased once those side effects have subsided and they're no longer experiencing a lot of nausea. If you've been placed on one of these medications by your treating doctor to help with either type two diabetes or to help with weight loss, 
Well, your doctor should be monitoring your response, the side effects, and adjusting the dose accordingly. And importantly, they should be monitoring to make sure that the weight loss is not happening too quickly. However, there is kind of a boom in more online telehealth type mechanisms to acquire this medication, in which case you do have to question, are people being monitored appropriately? Are they getting too high of a dose and losing too much weight too quickly? So you wanna make sure that this isn't something that you are just being influenced to take for weight loss because you saw it online. This is something that you really should be monitored by your doctor for and to make sure that it is even indicated for you. It's not a quick fix for weight loss. You still need to put in the lifestyle modifications. If you're thinking about shelling out $1,300 to $1,500 a month for this medication just to get summer body ready, Ugh, no, not a good idea. But if you are somebody who has type two diabetes or you have obesity and or weight related ailments, you may be a candidate for it. And under doctor supervision, it can be safely administered and actually really change people's lives for the better. I wanted to make this video because obviously cosmetic issues are in the realm of dermatology, things like filler um, that somebody might think they need with this kind of weight loss. But I was motivated to make this video because I do not like seeing the spread of misinformation and misleading messages around medical treatments and therapies. People who struggle with obesity, they have been stigmatized and stigmatized. And so to have people make comments like, don't go on that medication because it's going to make you look old, it's really ignorant uh, because you're basically telling the person, don't manage your weight because you're going to look old. And that's just ridiculous. I'm not an expert on this medication whatsoever, but I wanted to make this video to make it clear that the drug itself is not what is causing these changes in people's face or body. It's simply something that you can see with any type of weight loss, especially rapid weight loss. There are cosmetic procedures that you may be motivated or inclined to pursue after the weight loss, if that's your journey. If you want to hear more information about this drug from somebody who actually prescribes it and is really um, an expert in obesity management, I suggest the Instagram account, uh, I'll link it down below, Spencer Nadolsky. He's a physician who specializes in obesity management. He makes really great content about this, very informative. So I would suggest his content if you actually want to learn more about the drug. I hope this video was helpful to you. On the end slate, I'm going to link my recent video all about the TikTok frenzy around buckle fat pad removal. So check that one out next if that interests you. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.